Welcome to the PTSD Bunker Gear for Your Brain podcast. Post-traumatic stress disorder is not a death sentence, yet a rite of passage to a higher level of tolerance. Stay with us and come out of the darkness as your host, Carl Waggett, shines a light on this very misunderstood disorder. Welcome to PTSD, Bunker Gear for Your Brain. I'm your host, Carl Waggett, and welcome to episode 130. Ooh, a bit of a milestone. No, it's not. I just kind of made that up. Anyways, listen, if you guys have never seen us before, we're a podcast about post-traumatic stress disorder. But yes, we don't get all complicated, as I've said in other episodes. We keep it really simple here, guys. We we look at it through the eyes of the emergency services, which is police, fire, and ambulance, uh, dispatch, correctionals, Coast Guard, and of course, well, military. We're basically, any line of work that... Well, can be touched by these uh, emotional moments, if you call it that. Anyways, that's besides the point. Listen, for those of you who do listen, you know what's going on. So look, hey, as it goes, pull up a chair. Let's get on with it. So guys, last week, what we looked at was we looked at our loved ones. Yeah, because we, well, you know what? It's, it's, it's a tough time of year for some people. There's no doubt about it, right? And, you know, it's not that we're going to bang the same drum this week, but guys... I want to start looking at you guys. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, we can talk about motivation and we can talk about friends and family. And we can talk about all these outside circumstances that seem to affect our happiness, you know. But very rarely do we kind of look at ourselves. Ooh, now that got personal, didn't it? Yeah, and look, I don't want you to freak out and go, oh, Christ, Carl, I'm not in the mood for one of these podcasts. No, what I want to look at today is I want to look at self-worth. That's right. Yeah. You know, not not what other people value you as. I'm I'm talking about what you think of you. Yeah, no, and it's it's okay to cough up that, hey, you know what? I'm pretty proud of myself. That's right, yeah. You know what? I've I've gone up against some things, I've tackled some things, I've I've shied away from some things. But you know what, the majority of the time I got in the ring with it. You know what? And at the end of the day, whether anybody knows my story or not, well, I'm pretty proud of what I've done. You see, this is what I want to talk about in this episode because, you know, right away, as soon as I go to self-worth or I go to, you know, look at ourselves, right away, everybody goes, oh, fuck, here he goes. You know, that's right, this inner whatever the fuck he's on about. But guys, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about actually giving yourself a pat on the back from time to time, you know? And, hey, listen, it's okay. See, I think the big problem is, is not everybody knows everything about you. So the problem is, is that you kind of beat up on yourself a little bit because, well, quite frankly, you don't really let anybody in and, you, well, you're kind of hard on yourself. You you hold yourself to a higher standard, if you will. And, and albeit, there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes I think when it gets in the way is when it gets counterproductive and you actually start beating yourself up for stuff that you're doing right yeah th- this is no good and, and and see this in a roundabout way well it kicks the shit out of your self-worth see now the problem is, is when we start to lose our self-worth what do we do we well we look for it in other people yeah that's right you know it's like you know what i don't think that much of myself but you know what maybe if this person this person over here likes me that will make me a better person. So trust me, this is a mistake I fell into for my entire 20s and 30s. It's true, you know, the number of times that I felt like absolute shit, but you know what? If I made a room full of people laugh, it made me feel better. I don't know why it didn't, like it didn't, it it didn't scratch the itch entirely, but I'll, I'll tell you what, it, it grazed it. You know, it made me feel good to see other people laugh and, you know, I, I read a quote on the internet once, and it's so freaking true. You know, it's it's amazing what a smile can hide. You know, it, it, it's so true. And if, if, if you look at it through those set of eyes, well, you see the pain that some people live with day to day. And that's really why I wanted to talk about this subject today, because, well, quite frankly, I know it's real, because I felt it, you know. We kind of beat up on our self-worth a little bit. And and when we do that, well, it sends us in this really, really vicious spiral. So anyways, there you have it. So guys, listen, how how the hell are we going to get this self-worth thing back? Well, I can tell you one thing right out of the gates. Regardless of what you've gone through, you're still alive. That's a good thing, right? I mean, seriously, think about it. Think of the number of people that never actually made it to your age. I mean, that... That alone is something. You know, I heard something. 
a long time ago. It was a quote, and I thought it was brilliant. You know, it doesn't matter how bad it gets for you. You're living better than kings and queens did in the 1600s. For the simple reason you have electricity. That's right, and you have indoor plumbing, and you, you have these amenities. See, that's the thing. As soon as we start to realize that we do have things to be grateful for, that seems to flip a switch in our minds. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. This this attitude of gratitude, as they say, it, it, it does something for us. It does. You know that old saying out there, you know, I, I used to feel sorry for myself because I had no shoes till, well, till I met somebody with no feet. Yeah. You see, this isn't one of those things where I'm, I'm saying to you, well, you know, your problems aren't that bad. Look at the problems out there in the world. But you see, if there's one thing that I've learned about this mental health, this PTSD, this depression, this anxiety, is that it's a battle. It's true. You know, you have a choice. You can either win or you can lose. You can either be happy or you can be sad. You know, you have a million reasons why you should be sad. Nobody's arguing that fact. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter a shit. I'm sorry, but it doesn't. This was a realization that I finally came to. You see, okay, yeah, I can sit here and my life is a shit show and that's fine. You know, I've got all this stuff going on and it's terrible. And hey, listen, as always, since I was five years old, none of it's my fault, right? You know, it's always been that way. But the fact of the matter is, is I'm, well, I'm, I'm in the spot. Now I have a choice, don't I? I can either stay in the spot and, you know, constantly, you know, remind people of the, the things that have happened to me, which will ultimately drive my self-worth down because I'm constantly looking for people to understand my situation. Or I can take the situation that I have, give the middle finger to the odds, as Han Solo would, and start fighting. Start getting my self-worth back. What is it that makes me feel good about me regardless of what everybody else fucking thinks i don't care right now okay see that i i think sometimes that an individual has to get to that point right there at the not the not the bottom bottom i'm just saying to the point where they realize that okay if i don't do anything nothing's gonna happen that's that point that's that magical point where for some strange reason you can you can check your attitude and your pride and you check all that shit and you realize that if I don't start making something happen for myself, it's never going to happen. That's a magical moment. It's a moment that, well, that you cherish. I mean, you don't cherish it at the time. It's awful. Fuck, I hate it. Like, I mean, a terrible self-reflection. God, I'm in the corner of the room, ball and snot coming down my face. But the fact is, is that you're so thankful for it after. Because there's something about getting to that point that you realize that, okay, yeah, you're on your own. I mean, okay, everybody out there says, okay, yeah, we're, you know, we're all here to help you. But at the end of the day, they go to their family and you stay in your life. And you have a choice. You can either stand up and fight and get that life back. Or you can stay where you are. And those are your choices. They're not fair. I mean, as I've always said, you know, fair is something you take your kids to. It's not fair, but it's fact. So if you happen to find yourself in that situation, how do we get this self-worth back? Well, it's exactly like I said, right? You start to look at what is it that truly brings you pleasure? What is it that you love? Not because the masses love it, it's because you love it yourself. Who are those people out there that you love, that you love to be around? Guess what? Spend more time with them. Regardless of everything else, that's what you want to do is you want to absolutely engulf your things in the stuff that you loved. You know, essentially, be selfish. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, I know that's a, that's a tough pill for you guys to swallow because, you know, emergency services or anybody who works in this line of work, well, we help other people. We don't help ourselves. That's not the way it works, right? We're really good at helping other people. Well, you find yourself in this situation here, you're going to have to find the stuff that makes you feel good because that is what gives you that self-worth. And I'll tell you what, when you when you start to get that self-worth, when you start to realize actually just how incredible of a human being you really are, when you when you actually sit and look at yourself through the right set of eyes, other people will see it too. They'll be drawn to you. All of a sudden, you become a bright light in a dark room because you know what it's like to be at the bottom. 
And for some strange reason, now you enjoy life on a level that other people don't get to enjoy because you know what it's like to be so dark and so cold. And for some strange reason, being put down in that cage, now you appreciate everything more. That's right. Your self-worth increases exponentially because you enjoy what you do. You look forward to stuff. You move with ease now, with less stress. You're not so worried about everybody taking stuff from you because you realize what you have to offer. It's a beautiful moment. It really is. And when you start to realize that, guess what? Everything just starts coming flooding back in. It's beautiful. Friends, family, whatever, it doesn't matter. The stuff you love, I don't know. It just, it seems to come screaming back to you because, you know, instead of looking at this incredibly huge catalog that the universe has to offer, you've now zeroed in on the five things that you love the most. All that energy is focused in on that stuff. Not the stuff that used to haunt you because, well, quite frankly, you don't need to fight it anymore. I know everybody says you got to fight it. Fight the PTSD, fight the stigma. No. You know what you do? You turn your back on it. There's no need to you anymore. It does not bring you any closer to your goals. And now that you realize that's the purpose of your life is to obtain your goals, what's the point in holding on to the past? It doesn't do anything. It's a mute point. Okay, fine. Bad things happened to you. Bad things happened to everybody. You decided you didn't want to stay there. You decided that you wanted more for your life. You decided you wanted more for your friends and your family. Darkness has nowhere to hide when it comes to that stuff. It just it, it fizzles away like a fart in the wind. It just, there's no substance to it because, well, you don't fear it. And when you don't fear it, it can't grow. You're drawn towards the things you love, the things that make you feel alive, the things that the things that pull you out of that darkness. And ladies and gentlemen, that's how you get your self-worth back. There's no formula for it, and you don't know when you have it, but just for some strange reason, life is just easier now. Yeah, it's not like you cross some finish line or anything like that. It's And you always know it's back there, so you realize that the path back to it is actually anger and frustration, so you leave it. You park it. You realize it's counterproductive even though it feels so good at the time. It's okay to admit it. Anger feels good sometimes. It does. Oh, I love getting mad. But in the real world, it has no application. It doesn't do anything. All it does is breed more hate, more stigma. Sexy word. But you know. Guys, the sooner you start to realize that it's not really a fight, more of just a walking through a door... That's when you can make it happen. Now, listen, don't get me wrong. It's the hardest door you'll ever walk through. Because for some strange reason, you want to stay back and you want to fight it. You just want to fight it. Oh, you know what? It owes you something. So you want to make it pay. The fact is, is when you're ready to let go of that and you're ready to walk through that door, that's when everything changes. You have a better understanding of life and your perspective changes and you realize now what exactly it is you're here to do. You're here to give your gift, whatever the hell that is, to the world and the world will be better for it. But if you stay in that basement and you fight that past, nobody will ever experience your gift. Your gift will be too consumed with trying to destroy your past and therefore you you can't grow. And, and let's be honest, that's what happens in life is... Is, you know, people can't experience what they call negative growth, so they get bitter. <laughs> you know, you know, they realize that they've, you know, they've pissed away their youth or whatever you want to call it, whatever analogy there, and then, you know, now they're now they're bitter at it and they're upset and they find that they get more bitter as they get older because they realize how much time is passing by, never realizing that they just need to walk away from it and walk towards the stuff they love. But the problem is, fighting is a routine that our mind is very, very accustomed to, <laughs> you know, and we're good at it. You know, whether we like it or not, we're good at it. It's time to learn a new skill set. Yeah, it's true. You can't run on the same operating system that they used back in the 90s. It just doesn't work. Hey, listen, you, you guys remember the whole press play on tape? Yeah, you can't do that. You've got to evolve as a person. You need new skill sets. That's what we're teaching you today. I know it got a little dark there. I think I'm releasing this on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. It's like, holy shit, Carl, I'll go easy. But, guys, you've got to understand the light that's actually inside of you. It's it's miraculous. It's 
the gods wait in delight. You know, what else can I say? They do. They just sit and wait for you to find that light and just have the power to let go of the darkness. I know it's a little Star Warish, but hey, you know what? It's the truth. You know, it's the best way I can explain it to you because everybody knows you can stay and fight it. Oh, Christ. Oh, yeah. You get right down and dirty with it. Yeah. But guys, it's the walking away and it's the finding the self-worth because once you find that self-worth, then, well... And you can start experiencing that gift that you have. Whatever the hell it is. I don't know what it is. It could be anything. It could be making popsicle stick houses. I don't freaking know, right? But the fact is, is that's what living is, is finding what that is. This PTSD, depression, anxiety, it'll tie you up in knots. Yeah, it will. And it'll, it'll keep you busy in the past so you, you can't step into the future. And forget about being in the present. That's just ridiculous. Trust me, you'll never get to that again. That's almost unobtainable with PTSD. But, well, what are you going to do, right? Oh, my goodness. Look at the ticker tape. I'm way over time here. You know what? It must be a Christmas miracle. Oh, my word. That that episode went by. I think I blacked out. I don't even remember what I said. It's just, guys, you have to understand how important the self-worth is. And you know what? If I can, If I can give any present to anybody out there, it's just... Guys, once you start to realize the self-worth, once you once you take the time and you invest in yourself, you know, like like you invest in a vehicle or you invest in your house or your your portfolio, your whatever. But the fact is, is that you invest in yourself. You find out what this gift is, what this this thing that gives you self-worth. The world will benefit from it tenfold. Unfortunately, we will never be able to experience it. If you never find that self-worth and you constantly fight this, this post-traumatic stress disorder, you know, depression, anxiety on its level, you get on a different level. You know, as a kid say, level up, get on my level, they say. I love that. It makes me laugh, but it's true. Guys, the one who wins wars are the ones with the greatest weapons, the more technology. This is more technology. You have to understand there's a, well, there's a better way to fight this. There's a better way to get that self-worth back. You know, that, that feeling you used to have back in the day. You know, the, the stuff that got you the confidence to get you the job in the first place. Yeah, it's, if you think it's gone, boy, do I have a Christmas present for you. It's, guys, that's... What it is, it's that stuff that's underneath the surface. It always keeps bubbling up, you know? You know, every time you want to quit and throw in the towel, ooh, there it is, something's bubbling, you know? That's what it is. That's you. That's you wanting to live life. You know what? It's a new year right around the corner. Hey, that whole resolution thing, why not throw it in there? I'm just saying. This is something you can start at any time, my friends, seriously. And you know what? It's a lot more fun than you think it is. So, guys, look, you know what? Christmas Day, goodness me, Christmas Eve, whenever it is I release this, I don't know, but I've taken up way too much of your time. You know, what can I say? You guys are like family to me. So, guys, if you get a chance, listen, you know, we're still doing the Facebook show in the evenings because, hey, listen, PTSD, depression, anxiety doesn't take a day off for Christmas. Neither does the show, ladies and gentlemen. So there you have it. I'll be there running my mouth uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday of this week, of course. But guys, seriously, take a look into the self-worth thing. Yeah, really. It's uh, it's amazing the doors that it'll unlock. It's amazing the life that it will give you. So guys, I just, you know what? I want you to enjoy this gift. Take your time unwrapping it. It's a Oh, it's a beautiful one. It really is. You know what, guys? Happy holidays to everybody. I hope everybody has a fantastic time. I really do. And uh, guys, you know how it is. We'll catch up on Wednesday. Guys, if you get a chance, get out there with the family for a walk. Beautiful Christmas walk. Mm, that's where you make the memories for sure. You guys take care of yourself. We'll talk soon. Bye now. Thanks for listening to the PTSD Bunker Gear for Your Brain podcast. Gain more knowledge by going to ptsdbunkergearforyourbrain.com. While you're there, subscribe and comment. Join us next time for the PTSD Bunker Gear for Your Brain podcast.